Welcome to God, Vision, in Motion. I'm Evangelist Willie Smith, coming to bring you the Word of God. And I just want to thank you for joining me. And today, I just want you to know that to start off, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I would like to say to you that Jesus, God, love you. Through Jesus, God love you. And the whole thing about it, I like to say it like this. In John chapter 3, 16, it says, God so loved the world. Man, that's heavy right there because the world that we see is not so beautiful. But God does not change because God is love. And this is the, the good news. He made a way that you can get this love. And this love is through John, uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, how you can get in on this, this love. Because a lot of people are saying a lot of stuff about and leading people to Christ. But the whole thing about it, I like to go to the Word to see what the Word said because I want to be able to say this is a guarantee. If God said it, that sells it, this is it. But if we conjure up stuff in our own mind, God have no obligation to even enforce it because it's your Word, not His. And this is in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And we're talking about how you can get into the family. But before we get into the family, I want you to know that you have heard, and I know a lot of people out there have heard the word of God. They've heard about Jesus. And for some reason, you've been pondering it, and you had never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But this day, he says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And I come in the name of Jesus based upon Mark 16, 16. If you want to go there and look at it, it said God, Jesus told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel, that we should lay hands on the sick. And you'll find that in, in, in Mark. I better turn over there because people of Mark 16, 16, and this is the commandment that he has given all of us. And we all, not just, not just preachers, but uh, in uh Mark 16, 16, and verses 15. And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. My name they should cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands, and this is the thing I want to get to right here because I will be praying for those out there that have an ailment. They should be praying. They should lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. It means it might not be instant, but it recovered, meaning it might take a while, but it could be instant. It could be a miracle, but the whole thing about it, you're going to get it with your faith. And the Bible says, hold fast to your confession. And as we begin to, to get into this and I begin to pray, whatever it is, when I get to a certain point, you I won't know what it is, but you know what it is. And most of the time, the devil attack you in your mind because we have a lot of mental illness. Seem like every time you turn, somebody doing something and they blame it on mental illness when they realize, don't realize what they need is this hope that I'm talking about. And this hope is in Jesus Christ and him crucified. And the world fight this and, and the enemy come in to attack your mind. We got a lot of people talking about suicide and doing all kind of crazy stuff because if they have seen the other side and found out what's over there, they might change their mind. Because if you don't know, nobody else is saying God so loved the world. Then the Bible said to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. So we have a history of what God have for us. But the devil is a, is a liar. He's a deceitful person. If you commit suicide, you're going to be with your father, the devil. And on the other side, if you don't know what it is, I always say, if, if what then? If you kill yourself, you go jump off something, kill yourself or take some, what then? If you have a guarantee that you'll go to a better place, and it ought to be based upon whatever you're doing, based upon some knowledge or somewhere that you read that if I go over here, take this, and I die, over here would be a better place other than through Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, 
one of the things that I want to do based upon this scripture here, uh, I want to pray for those that right now that's listening to me and that have decided that to accept Jesus Christ and become a child of God. And then this is the other thing I want you to know is this. It says today, choose this day who you're going to serve. After that, choose this day. You can't not serve the devil and God at the same time. You know, you got to find out his ways before you can decide there's, one, there's two sides of the coin. You got to decide which one you're going to be on. Now, if you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, I'll, right now I would like to lead you into this prayer in Romans 10, 9, and 10. And I hear a lot of people saying a lot of things, but it's not just saying words will save you. But if you believe it, that's what it says here, that you got to believe it. Don't say, tell us, say this. That didn't come out your heart. It come out of somebody else's heart. Say this. But the Bible says here in Romans 10, 9 and 10, and ver I'm going to start at verse 6. Verse 6, it said, But the righteousness, righteousness which is of faith, speak it on the wise. Say, not in their heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. What says it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, and he's talking about your spirit, not the thing that pumps blood, but your real, the real you have to be able to stand up boldly in, in public and confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if that's what you want to do. It says, today, if you decide, in other words, choose this day who you will serve, because you're going to serve one or you're going to serve somebody, but at least it ought to be your choice, you know, because you can be used by the, not even knowing it. And I see that we see this going on all the time. A lot of Christians are not informed. They're still little babies. They're not in uh, this world system. Have them tied up in knots because they believe in. Uh, but, oh, I want to continue. Well, that's another lesson. I want to stay with this here right now. So if you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just pray along with me. I'll lead you in this prayer. Just say, Father, not Father, I'm sorry I made a mistake right there. God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. You, I believe that you sent your only begotten son, that you raised him from the dead for my justification. And right now with my mouth, I confess Jesus into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I believe, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead for my justification. Based upon that, you said I would be saved. For with the, you said with the heart, man, believe into righteous, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And right now, I accept Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior. And I have chosen to this day to serve him, to walk with him, to learn about him, to grow into him. In Jesus' name, that is my confession of faith. And right now, I would like to move on to uh, another script that talks about healing. And it talks about healing. If you're out there today, and I want to, before I get away from this, I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. Right now you have become, if you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have become a child of God, your son. No longer people can lauder over you and keep you in the abundance. We have the liberty to, 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 we have freedom, not bondage, because people will keep you in bondage, doing stuff, trying to earn your salvation through works and, and doing this and doing this and doing this, having fun races and all kind of stuff, but you don't find any of that in the Bible because one of the things that we find today that in the world, there's, the devils look like outdoing us. We have churches, that, I mean, great, big, large churches, but we got to get out and have rummage sale and 
run, do this, and run, do that, and run, do this. And if we look in the book of Acts, he said when they went out, well, after the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and everything, they went out and sold their property. They sold it. They didn't bring it to the apostle. They went and sold their property and got the money, and then they brought it to the church, to the apostle, and laid it at his feet. And all their needs were met everybody, and divided it. Nowadays, it's everything, bring it all to me. Just bring it in. <laughs> but the good news about Nobody get away with anything. It just matter a time when it'll go on if it's not done God's way. Because he'll allow, the grace of God will allow us to do a whole lot of stuff. But the end time, the time come when payday will come or the devil will run you off because if you're not following his ways, then you have no, what you would call, protection. When you follow in the word of God, you, in other words, you follow, nobody can take it from you. The Bible talks about uh, uh, who can be a successful against us. And we know people are against, against us, but the whole bottom line is who can be successful against us providing we follow the word of God. So getting away from this, I want to move on. Uh, I want to try to get as much in uh, as I can, and, but I don't want to miss this one. After you get saved. After you get saved, I'm going back to this because after you get saved, you need to be filled with the Spirit. You need, the Bible says, I'll give you power. In the book of Acts, it says, I'll give you power to tread, give you power, not to the preachers, not to the deacon, to you, a believer, that you be filled with the Spirit, that you be able to speak in another tongue. And now, if you would like to receive the Holy Spirit, just like, just like you prayed with me a few minutes ago for salvation, I'd like for you, if you'd like to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, as I lay hands on you by a proxy, just say, I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then just let your vocal cords move, utter something, like a baby, like a, like, like a baby. But then you have to develop that and practice it. And after a while, nobody come out of their mother's womb talking like I talked today. When I came out, it was less what you call gibberish, a baby talk. And then one day, Daddy walked in, and he wanted to know who was that in the house. My voice had changed. And this is the way it is when you begin to practice, build it up yourself, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, the other part of it is that uh, the Holy Spirit will teach you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. You cannot do anything without the Holy Spirit. You can do some things, but I'm talking about to be successful at it because it'll be hard. It'll be hard work. It'll keep you on the grinding stone all the time. He would warn you about what's around the block to go the other way. When you, and, when, and when you begin to practice this, you become sensitive to the Holy Spirit speaking to you whenever he speaks, because he speaks to your spirit. Now, in the book, of it says uh, about this new birth, it says God is letting you know God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, this is what opens up the door as you being born again. That's what we were doing when you get born again. Except Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. God counted as that you were born of the spirit of God. Now the door is open that you can go to the Father. Before that, no flesh can go before God. It have to be your, your spirit man. Because God is a spirit, and you must worship him in spirit and in truth. And as you begin to get into these scriptures for yourself, because too many people are running and asking somebody else, but you got the Bible to talk about, he says, study to show yourself approved. you got to be able to get into these scriptures for yourself, because most of the time you're trying to talk to somebody else out there that doesn't want it like you want it, or not growing in the things of God, and they almost, I mean, if you don't, if it, they almost want to jump on you, almost want to fight you and all that kind of stuff because of ignorance and not knowing the blessing of God, what he's done for you, what he's given us, that we can stand and begin to be able to stand and, and other undergird each other through prayer. It's too much fighting going on among each other. You know, well, you call up somebody now and start talking to them about the things of God, and the first thing they talk about is some old worldly mess, a football game. You can talk all day long about who, why they lost the game. But when it comes down to your life, what's going to happen to you, 
in a, could be in a few minutes. It could be the tomorrow. It could be the, when, who knows. You know, people we know that I grew up with, they ain't here no longer. You know, I'm older than they are, but I'm still here and they gone. But the good news is I thank God every day that I woke up, that I'm able to breathe his air, to be able to be thankful, to be gracious, because we have a loving father that cares about every little thing about you. And you got to, you got to get into these scriptures and find out what God has blessed you with. And then the great uh, the commandment that he's given us is love, that we love one another. But we don't see that too much now. The love, I'm talking about how the God kind of love. I'm not talking about this world type of love. The God kind of love is that I'm loving in spite of. Now we got people in the I hate this person. I hate this. I, you know, so and so and so. And I'm colored. I'm this. <laughs> but in the Bible, in the, in the body of Christ, there's no color. You know, the only way I can identify a person is because, maybe because, if I saw someone do, I said, oh, he's a black person. But in the deep, as a Christian, you're in Christ. You're, you're in Christ. So there's no color that we need when we need to come out of that as we get saved about this whole thing of racism and all kind of. But if you're in Christ and walking in, he said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, then he would condemn. This is a this is promises to you, but you won't know that unless you get into the scripture. But if you want to remain a little baby in Christ, because most of the people that get saved, people throw them in the places that they shouldn't be because they haven't really deciphered them. They haven't really grown up. And the whole thing about it, that individual have to want to grow. You can't force it on them to, well, you need to be doing this. It can't be no, the Bible says there's now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And it has to be done with love. And the thing about it is what's ever in that individual will come out as he begin to walk in the things of God and you begin, ministers will be able to recognize the call that should be able to recognize if they born filled with the Spirit, acknowledge the Holy Spirit in the ministry, then they would be able to acknowledge to see a person growing not that they going, well, I like this person. He's been hanging around here for, you know, I don't know when. And, we, you know, I'm just looking for time to send him out, to cast him out. And he's been sitting around there for years and still a baby, still haven't grown, you know. And the word of God will always point you, if you know the word and standing on the word, it'll point you to baby, but baby Christian. Right away, you'll be able to say this person here. Uh, you would know not just because he'd been hanging around or working and looking for fishes and loaves, but I'm talking about spiritual. By looking for us, to, uh, those who are born again, to grow up spiritually because some people think because they got saved today that they just as old as the pastor that have been there for 70 years. They think that they know more than anybody. Babies come out and they come out with uh, just uh, like a baby. You know, he knows nothing, so he has to be nourished carefully. You know, have to be nourished. The way we talk to him, the way, you know, we used to have what we call baby talk. But then after they get up some size and begin to, you know, we used to say after they get up the size smelling muscle, you can't talk baby talk to him no more. But spiritually, it needs to be a place that they can come every day, come every night, a day, whatever they want to do but to grow up in the Word of God, to get a hold to the Word of God, because this is your spiritual food after you get saved. Before that time, you can't understand it. Before you got saved, you can't know, you can't even hear it, because these books, this, this Word is written to Christians. Once you get saved, someone needs to give you a Bible and then point you to a place where that you can sit down and hear the word of God on a continual basis when you're out there. Because some people think all you're supposed to do just, you know, when you come, you just come in the church. No, but there ought to be a meal there when you come to, to the church, when you come into the door. Every time that you come in, there ought to be someone, uh, a minister, to teach the word of God. So where you can go back out and begin to share the word with others as we begin to grow spiritually. You don't just grow up overnight. And now you don't need no more words. You come maybe Sunday, and that's what they're, 
the idea is that you just come to church on Sunday. But the Bible talks about forsaking, not the assembly of you say us together. When we come together, we're coming together to worship our God in spirit and in truth. But we need to be able to get the word on a continual basis, just like we get our food in the morning, the breakfast, dinner, and whenever, because that's your spiritual food. But many times people think, well, you just, they just come to church and just sit and don't do, don't, but that's what this the whole idea is, it's like a college. You know, I'm going to school to get some information, to be able to fortify, because we have a thief. The thief come to kill, steal, and to destroy, to keep you from growing spiritually. And he, but most of the time what we do, he attacks the mind. So right now, before I get too far, I would like to pray for those, if you having a challenge, while I'm in, if you having a challenge, I'm gonna pray. Uh, uh, I'm gonna pray, and I'm gonna bind up whatever it is. But I, whatever it is, you call it out. I won't know what it is, but whatever it is, when I get to the point, you call it out, and you lay hands on yourself by process as I'm going to pray for you. And this is the, that's the good news. He sent His word. We have scripture to back to. He sent his word to heal them. And right now, I'm sending the word to heal you. And whatever you do, you hold fast to your confession and change the way you talk about mama had it, grandpa had it, and so-and-so had it, and all that kind of, you have to change your confession of faith about, well, I got this, the doctor said. But begin to stand on the word of God, you know, because this is what faith, the Bible said the just, those who've been justified must live by faith. In other words, we have seen God. Everything that we get, most of the stuff you get today, we believe in that we'll get it. We believe in that we'll have better people in the White House. We believe in for this and we believe in for that. But right now, I want to pray for you. Father God, I thank you and I lay hands on them out there, Father God. I don't know who they, but you know. I thank you for the anointing that you have anointed me with to be able to reach those to touch someone, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I come against sickness. I come against arthritis in the name of Jesus. Migraine headaches, Father God, in the name. mental illness, I come against it in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you right now that you visit that individual, Father God, to turn him around, Father God. Let him know your love, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, for cancer and arthritis, Father God, in Jesus' name. I come against it. And now your confession ought to be whoever's out there, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, I come against it. By the authority of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, and what you do is begin to change your confession because, in other words, the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And as you begin to say what God says about you, that you hear, regardless of how you feel, well, I don't feel anything you're not supposed to feel. Just like when you get an email. When, when you get an email or whatever these things that they send into your phone, how do you know it came? Until you open up your phone and look at the phone and say, that you got, oh, I got an email or something like that. I got a, 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 whatever it is on these phones that they get to you now. And this is the same thing your spiritual birth is about, how it comes. Because the Bible says in the end time, knowledge will increase. And we see that all the time. We didn't understand how God would be, how about the new birth. We didn't understand. But now he began to open up things that we can see by these instruments, by technology and things that we can see. How you, all of a sudden there's something written on your screen. A little television. I got TV and now you got a monitor where I can just talk, talk at what channel I want. I just tell it what channel I want and all that kind of stuff. So the whole thing of God is greater. God, all this stuff is coming from God because he's been telling us in the end time, he says, in the last, knowledge would increase. So we see it all the time, that knowledge would, by revelation, knowledge of the word of God. And right now, uh, I want to leave you with this in the book of Hebrews, uh, Matthew chapter 28, I believe it is. I want to leave this, Matthew eleven twenty-eight. I want to leave you with this uh, before I go. Matthew chapter 28 and no, uh, 11, 11, 28. 
And G this is Jesus talking to you who just got born again. It says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my, my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's a promise to you. Since you got born again, if you got some problem, bring it to Jesus. Cast all your cares. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And then he says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. These are things that you need to know. In the book of, uh, these are things that you must know. In other words, what you must know is what you have in Christ. This is the thing. What you must have, what the reality of the word of God. Is it real? You need to be able to test it. And the only way you're going to test it is to be able to be, the Bible said, be doers of the word and not just hearers only. And then we have an enemy to our faith. That's the first thing you need to know, that you, the devil comes to kill and to steal and bring thoughts and ideas and suggestions to you. And that's why he said cast down imagination in every thought. And then the other part of it, as a Christian out there, you need to find out what side are you on. Evil, if it's evil, it's not of God. And if you're out there running, planning on voting for somebody, you need to find out what God says about it because many traps are set for us to be able to, and especially in churches, set for us to be out there running behind somebody else because of the color of their skin. I'll tell you, this, this black person, the devil come in many colors. And that's the, that's the thing that you have to be wise about because those are real traps. Your blessing coming from God, not from man. And so the, the thing is, I, my time is up, and uh, I thank you for joining me, and I will hope I can get back to this message on a later day to continue it, uh, maybe make a part two of this. But thank you for joining me today. In Jesus' name.